see you. Page 199. Where the soul never dies. Good to see you. And it's good to be in the Lord's house. Page 199. Gather around the altar. Do number four. You ready? What's the first word? So if you have a prayer request or praise report, give that in, and then we'll gather around the altar for prayer. Anybody have a prayer request? Yes. The others. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's remember the I got to see Kenny today and yeah, he's going and, and sing, Paul Singlemani as well is gonna be going to rehab. Right. He was
surgery's going as well. So I must remember Sharon Lee. I haven't heard anything about her surgery yet. We were there earlier, but uh, don't know really how that turned out. So let's continue to remember her in prayer. Any others? Yes. All right, let's come remember her. Yes. Amen. Can you remember her? Any others? Remember Bob and Gina Jones. Yeah, they're going to, they're, he sent us a, a text right before church. They're doing a, a brain surgery tomorrow, a procedure, and if it goes well, he thinks everything will be good with God the baby. Good. So he said God it's a big Lord. surgery, though, so. Uh, let's remember the little baby. She's had several surgeries since being born. Her name's, uh, what is it, Juliana? Julia? Julia. So let's remember Julia Urbano in our prayers as she goes to surgery tomorrow. Any others? Yes. All right. Let's remember her in prayer. Amen. Any others? Bless her heart. Yeah. All right. Let's continue remembering Kim. Any others? Yes. remember him. Yes. All right. Let's remember her in prayer. Yes. remember that request yes remember Joey and Eddie and Miss Miss Ann any others yes all right let's remember can you remember her yes amen amen Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Any others? Yes, Liz? All right, yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. <laughs> Any others? Yes. Yes. others yes down mm. all right let's remember Daryl in our prayers anyone else all right all right remember her mom any unspoken requests you'll raise your hand or we'll gather around the altar as we sing with this sweet hour of prayer sweet
this road Come for tonight's <clears throat> offering. Brother Rios, would you pray for us? It was on a Tuesday. 
Somebody touched me. It was on a Tuesday. Somebody touched me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. Now it was on a Wednesday. God bless you. It was on a Wednesday. Amen. It was on a Wednesday. Somebody touched me. It must have been the It was on a Thursday. Get better. It was on a Thursday. Somebody touched me. It was on a Thursday. Somebody touched me. It was on a Friday. Somebody touched me. It was on a Friday. Somebody touched me. It was on a Friday. Somebody touched me. Saturday. It was on a Saturday. Amen. It was on a Saturday. Somebody touched me. Yeah. Amen. Ain't that sweet? Must have been. Now what about a Sunday? It was on a Sunday. It was on a Sunday. Somebody touched me. It was on a Sunday. How about just shaking hands with those round about you then? My heavenly home is I feel like traveling on No pain, no death Can enter there Feel like traveling on Yes, I feel like notes he just left it blank did you hear that <laughs> uh, there are five one chapter books in the bible one in the old testament how many in the new okay i was hoping you'd see if you knew your math balcony what is the old testament book yes Give me another one. What's another one? Philemon. First John. Did someone say Titus? <laughs> I heard first John. No, I heard second John, Philemon, Obadiah. What's the other one? Third John and Jude. All right. If you have your Bibles, turn to the shortest book in the Bible, which is the book of Third John. 3 John, 249 words is in that book. 3 John, and we'll finish up the smallest letter in our Bible tonight. Stand with us. Last week we jumped around and looked at two other gentlemen. Tonight we close with the third one. 3 John, begin reading... In verse number 9, John says, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receives us not. Wherefore, 
If I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for once again being able to be in your house tonight. And we want to lift up all the many requests, so many that are in hospitals and rehabs and uh, some having surgeries. We pray for them uh, today. I pray that you'd watch over them, be with the others that are here who have needs and burdens in their life. I pray that you would meet those needs and just be with us tonight for a few moments, we pray. Uh, we pray for those who are in the, the path of the hurricane. We pray that you'd watch over them and uh, keep them safe, we pray. For it's in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Dr. A.T. Robertson once wrote an article for a well-known Southern Baptist magazine. In that article, he described the conduct of Diotrephes, the man we're looking at tonight, and how Diotrephes was a power-hungry deacon and that he wanted to run everything in the church. After writing that article the following week, 25 deacons from various Baptist churches wrote to the editor and canceled their subscriptions. They contended that A.T. Robertson was writing about them. It would seem he hit a nerve with a few deacons. Billy Graham said, as every pastor knows, a deacon can either be a great blessing to a church or a grievous burden to a church. W.A. Criswell said, during the years I pastored, I had the privilege of working with some men who were excellent deacons. So they were men who loved God. Men who understood their role as a deacon, they were a great help to me as a pastor and served the Lord and our church in a commendable and fruitful way. He said, these men hold a special place in my heart. He said, on the other hand, I have known a few that should have been taken out and hung on a sour apple tree. <laughs> he said, they caused me and the church nothing but grief and sorrow and he said, I discovered early in my ministry that not everyone should be or can be a deacon. Erwin right. Lutzer, you know Erwin Lutzer, former pastor of Moody Church in Chicago, said it ought to be a federal law that a pastor be able to shoot one member per year. <laughs> he said, there have been many times when a deacon would have been my target and other times when I probably would have gone over my quota. Well, as we continue looking at 3 John and finish it up tonight, we want to look at this man named Diotrephes. As I said last week, the book of 3 John is about three different individuals. You see the first one named Gaius in verse number 1. Then there's the second character, or well, the third character, actually Demetrius in verse number 12. And then the second character we're looking at tonight, Diotrephes in verse number 9. Now, Diotrephes is, is only mentioned once in the entire New Testament. Only three verses shed light on him, yet what is said about him in those three verses pretty much tells us all we need to know about this character. Now, there are different ideas and theories about what his position was in this church, but most suggest he was some type of elder or deacon, some type of leader in that church uh, we would say he certainly was not a deacon by New Testament standards, but he was a power-hungry deacon uh, that needed to be called out for what he was doing and put in his place. And so who's going to do that? None other than John the Beloved. John the Disciple of Love. He will be the man to do this in this letter and gives every indication that he wants to do it personally and publicly in the future. I guess we could say that Diotrephes was one of those deacons that needed to be hung on a sour apple tree, right? 
Uh, Warren Wearsby writes it best. He said, at the judgment seat of Christ, we will discover how many hearts have been broken and churches destroyed because of the arrogant ministries of people like Diotrephes. So we're going to see Diotrephes, that he, he's not a New Testament person we want to emulate, but it's well worth our time to learn a little bit about him. So tonight, I want us to look at this power-hungry deacon and want to give you three characteristics about this man by the name of Diotrephes. Characteristic number one, I want you to notice with me, there was an arrogance that he displayed. If you look again in verse number nine, John states, I wrote unto the church. The letter of third John, we find, was a follow-up letter. It was a follow-up letter from a, a previous letter he had written in which no one received. Whatever John had formerly written the church about, apparently Diotrephes had interfered, probably read it, and prevented its contents from ever being received, heard, or followed by this church. The sad thing is, we have no idea what it said. And as verse 1 indicates, now the aged apostle, he writes another letter, and this letter's not to a church, it's to a man, because he understood if I wrote it to the church, they're not going to get it. Yeah. So I write it to this man by the name of Gaius. And we read, John pulls no punches when he talks about this man named Diotrephes. In verse 9, he speaks of this arrogance that was displayed in Diotrephes' life. And as we look closer, we notice and see what Diotrephes desired. John said, Diotrephes loved to have the preeminence among them. Now that word preeminence comes from two Greek words, which means simply this, to be fond of of being first. He wanted to be first in everything that was going on at the church. It means being ambitious. It means being in charge. And so this deacon, this leader, wanted to be in charge and control of whatever happened in the church. And he loved having this power that he claimed for himself and simply loved having the preeminence. So here was a man who was used to getting his way and used to running things. He's throwing his weight around in this church and putting himself in charge of all that happened. So he was a man who only thought of in terms of himself. And as you read this, it, you think what a contrast to John the Baptist who said he must increase and I must decrease. The Apostle Paul, he proclaimed that in all things Jesus Christ was to be given the preeminence. But instead of Christ having the preeminence in this church, Diotrephes desired the preeminence. He wanted to be first. He wanted to be in charge. So it's what he desired. But furthermore, we see it's what he demanded. The phrase that we read, who loveth to have the preeminence, seems to tell us that he was an aspiring man. One writer said he was a man who would bark out orders, assuming authority to which he was not given or entitled. Albert Barnes writes, he said, the presumption from the phrase, who loveth to have the preeminence, would rather seem to be that he was an aspiring man, arrogating rights which he had not, and assuming authority that was not entitled to any office in the church. So he not only loved to be first, but it would appear that he insisted on being in charge. So Diotrephes had decided for everyone, I will be the head of the church. Yet the Bible says in Colossians 1.18 that Christ is the head of the body, the church. You see, God has given us a divine order of authority in a church. And it starts with himself. And whenever a deacon or, or, or a member like Diotrephes tries to assume that authority, what they're doing is they're stepping outside God's order of authority and it always causes problems in a church. Every case behind such actions as this is an attitude of arrogance. Such a person thinks more highly of themselves than they should. I, I like what Junior Hill said. He said, I, I've met a few people like that. They could strut sitting down. You see. So we see, number one, for Diotrephes, there was the arrogance he displayed. But then number two, we see there were the attacks he delivered. 
Diotrephes was not content with just being in charge. He also had to attack those people who were a threat to him being in charge. And as we get closer, we see the kind of attacks he made to those around and in the church. First, we see that his attacks were deceptive attacks. Uh, look in verse 10. Paul says, Wherefore, John says, Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth. What were these deeds? He tells us, prating against us with malicious words. So, so John speaks of how Diotrephes has personally attacked him. That word prating there signifies to talk as a babbler, to, to raise false accusations while just babbling. You ever met a babbler before? And this person is, they're just babbling on and on, and in their babbling, they're raising false accusations. And so it speaks of bringing empty charges against someone. And so John says that's what he's doing against us. He's prating against us with malicious words. The, the, the words malicious words, it, it speaks of evil words. Words that were intended to harm someone or, or injure someone. And so what we see here is what Diotrephes was saying about John, it was just sheer nonsense. It, it wasn't true. It was obviously evil and it was intending to hurt him. But here's the sad thing. There are people... Who love to hear such talk. And there are such people who will believe such talk. Listen how quiet it is right now. What's going on in here? <laughs> Apparently, Diotrephes had made these accusations against John at maybe even one of the church meetings when John wasn't present to defend himself never ceases to amaze me how vicious people can be. And I'm talking about Christian people. In order to make themselves look good or to get their own way, what do they do? They attack others. Um, then again, sometimes they just tell plain old-fashioned lies in order to hurt someone else. Of course, the even sadder truth is that there's always a crowd that loves to hear such garbage, as I said. They, they join right in. They help spread the rumors and they help tell the lies that are told. Uh, they're like the ones uh, in Psalm 41, 7. Listen to what David said. He said, all that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. So, so lies and rumors and, and these gossip, it, it, it's hurtful. You, you've heard sticks and stones will break no bones, but words, that's not true, right? Words do hurt. Gossip hurts. Some people gossip, other people slander, while others just tell bold-faced lies. I like what Mark Twain said. He said, the difference between a person who tells the truth and tells a lie is that a liar's got to have a better memory. Amen? I like the story about a salesman. He knocked on the door of a, a rundown apartment house in a low rent district. The mother didn't want to talk to this guy, so she told her little boy, I want you to just go tell him when he comes to the door, I can't come and talk to him because I'm in the bathtub. So her son answered the door this way. He said, uh, Mister, we ain't got no bathtub, but my mom just told me to tell you she's in it. <laughs> Proverbs speaks of how God hates a few things. And you know what number one is at the top? <laughs> a proud look, and then guess what he adds after that? A lying tongue. Uh -huh. And he moves on and says, and a false witness uh -huh. that speaketh lies. And I want to tell you, I believe when a faithful servant of God is attacked unjustly by others, God will ultimately vindicate that servant. And those who tell the lies, hey, let God take care of them, amen? Amen. God will take care of them. They will reap their evil in ungodly ways. And so Diotrephes attacked. They were deceptive. But they were also divisive. How many you know gossip is divisive in a church? And so it's divisive here. John says that Diotrephes was not content therewith in trying to hurt John only, but also in any of the members of the church that tried to defend John. Or challenge Diotrephes' behavior. Look what it says in the middle of verse 10. He says, Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, 
and forbiddeth them that would and casteth them out of the church. So Diotrephes, he was so intent on having his way that anyone in the church who disagreed with him or showed any respect for John or tried to stick up for John, he not only attacked, but he even went as far as to have them thrown out of the church. So he's not only causing John heartache, he's creating division within the church. And listen, the devil wants nothing more than to create division in the church. But, but, but these people like Diotrephes in the church, they could care less about the testimony of the church. They could care less about reaching lost people for Christ or, or seeing the church being blessed of God. All they care about is themselves and having their own way. Yeah. That's Diotrephes. Leadership Magazine listed the key ingredient for church conflict and reported that they are caused by personality clashes and people with different agendas. Diotrephes definitely had a different agenda than John did. And so John shows us the arrogance he displayed and the attacks that he delivered. And then last of all, notice the authority he dismissed. When you have a Diotrephes in the church, there's a deeper issue than him just wanting to be first. You see, the root cause is always a spiritual problem. Uh, I believe the book of James says, what comes out of the mouth comes from right here. Bill Gothard put it this way. He said, it has been said that at the heart of a problem is the problem of a heart. And so the behavior of Diotrephes was simply because he had a heart problem. And in the, the closing words of verse 9, John says that Diotrephes, he receiveth us not. Diotrephes assumed to take upon himself an authority that he was not entitled. And most of all, think of this, he was rejecting the authority of the apostle John. I mean, John was a man who walked with Jesus himself. I mean, he was the beloved, the, the one who Jesus loved. The one who leaned his head upon Jesus' breast. And yet Diotrephes could care none of that. He rejected him and spurned him. That takes some backbone right there. In my opinion, though, a person is walking on dangerous ground when they're defiant of God's word and God's order of things. The quickest way, I'm telling you, to see God take his hand off a church is for God's order of authority in a church to be violated by self-serving individuals who have only one desire, and that's to do it their own way. Yeah. We'll say it again. The first and final authority of any church is God's Word. That's the first and the final authority. And the authority of a church, it's not Robert's Rules of Order or even the church constitution both of them could be good, but the Bible is the authority of the church. And when we let any man-made rules or man-made constitution overrule the teachings of the Bible, we are treading as a church on serious ground. So we see he had a problem with the heart, a defiant heart. And as we come to a close, we see Diotrephes also had what I believe was a depraved heart. Why don't you look in verse 11? John instructs the Christian to behave the exact opposite of a Diotrephes. Notice what he says. He re, we read, he says, Beloved. Who's he talking to there? Saved or unsaved? All right, saved. He's talking to the Christian people. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God. But he that doeth evil hath not seen God. And as John calls for a different behavior, he also reveals the real problem that Diotrephes had. And I believe it's true. Diotrephes didn't know God. The phrase, hath not seen God, is used to speak of someone who has not experienced 
a relationship with Jesus Christ. We read about it in 1 John chapter 3, verse 6. John said, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, but whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. So John is saying that, that a man who hath not seen God is a person who has never really been saved. They don't know the Lord. And as John said, they're just simply evil. And so sometimes we, we go and, and we go to churches and we have churches and we ask the question, how can certain people behave the way they do? The simple fact is this, church, they've never really been saved. And that's why they act that way. It is amazing what a good dose of real Bible salvation will do for a person. I believe saved people will act different, don't you? I'm not saying we don't make mistakes and we, 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 we fail and we fall short, but we should be acting different. And these people who always want to cause trouble in a church, people who lie about others, people who just come in here and want to stir up things, I say one thing, get saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus will work on that old heart. Amen? Said it before. Jesus is on his way to the Garden of Gethsemane. And he's going to give one last teaching lesson in John 17. And what does he tell those disciples? He said, more than anything else, you need to be unified. You need to be one as I and the Father are one. And he says, and not me only. And he talks about those who will be coming ahead, talking about you and I, to stay unified in the church. So in closing, I want you to notice that John states that if he has the opportunity, I like how he puts it there, if I can, uh, if I come, and you say, well, why, why don't he go? I mean, if it was me, buddy, I'd be in that guy's face. Remember, John is over 100 years of age. He probably doesn't travel very much. We're never told where this church is located. We believe that John is in Ephesus. We don't know where this church is. We don't know where Gaius and Demetri, where they, where they are. But he states, if I have the opportunity to return, he says, I will take care of Diotrephes. Can't you imagine old 100-year-old John getting in Diotrephes? I would have loved to have been there if he showed up, wouldn't you? He says in verse 10, wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds. Which he doeth. And I said last week, if he did show up, I guarantee you, Gaius and Demetrius was on his right and on his left. So people like Diotrephes cannot be tolerated in the church. John says they, they must be dealt with. Where's we put it best? He said, sometimes a good house cleaning is in order. So that's why we're firing all our deacons tonight in front of everyone. <laughs> We like, <laughs> the deacons just said amen. What's up with that? <laughs> now we love our deacons. We do. Well, stand up. I want to see my, where's the deacons at? Stand up. Let them see you. They're upstairs. They're down below. Stand up. We, we, listen, these guys, they love God. They love the church. And bo the hardest thing, they love me. Can you believe that? And, and I don't want to hang these guys on a sour apple tree. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Appreciate all our deacons. Deacons and our trustees, but as John says, we must be on guard because the devil wants more than anything else for the church of Jesus Christ to be split right in half. Amen. Let's stand together, heads bowed and eyes closed. Let's get a song of invitation. Maybe you're here tonight, you have a need in your life, a burden that you're carrying, a heartache, and you want to be remembered in prayer. Would you just slip up your hand by saying, pray for me, bless those hands. I have a need tonight. Only God knows about it, but I want to be remembered in prayer. Any others, bless those hands. What if you're here tonight and you have loved ones who are unsaved and they need the Lord in their life? Would you just slip up your hand by that saying, pray for me to be a light to them. Bless all the hands. Lord, we love you. We thank you uh, for our church. We thank you for the love of the people and uh, the closeness of the people. And God, I pray that you would just watch over uh, our church and our school and that you would put a hedge of protection around us and that uh, we would continue. Uh, as John talked about in 1 John, continue in love and uh, to uplift one another, encourage one another.
I pray tonight for those who raise their hand. They have needs in their life, and you know each and every need and burden. And for the others who raise their hand, there's so many who's unsaved, God. I pray that, Lord, you would speak to their hearts, those who are unsaved, and that we would do our part to try to lead them to Christ. We love you, and we thank you for our church. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing, if you need to pray. Page 410. Jesus. said, uh, after Sunday's sermon, I prayed to God for a miracle. Today I see my doctor, and MRI showed no cancer cells on my brain. Praise God for that. Uh, no cancer cells on my back. The nodules in my lungs are shrinking. Some are completely gone. Bless your sweetheart. Uh, she Thank said, you. I still have to take uh, more chemo, but a lower dose. So thank the church for all my your prayers. Oh. So we thank God praise for that. We thank the Lord for God that. And uh, we're praying for others. Yeah. Any other announcements before we're dismissed tonight? Bus leave.